Welcome back, everybody. I am Edward Builder, and this is your fast, concise, and focused stimulus update. Guys, it's election day. I hope everybody got out there and voiced their vote and voted for whomever they wish to see take us into 2021 and the next term, right? So uh, today, we're going to talk about lockdowns, the virus updates, the election and stimulus, and some more details on Main Street lending. So if there was ever a video that you guys should share with your friends, share this video, because this is for all you Uber drivers, your Lyft drivers, 1099s, independent contractors, small business owners, people like myself who manage multiple streams of revenue. Maybe you guys are into Airbnb or you have these side hustles. This is your stimulus update. Let's get into the details. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Don't forget, before we move on, to share this video with your friends, like, and become a subscriber. And remember, I have a giveaway. We'll talk more about that at the end of the video. Okay, there's a lot of influencers right now talking about the lame duck scenario that could happen in Washington. What is this lame duck scenario? Well, the lame duck, imagine for a moment, you just put in your two-week notice on your job. Imagine putting a two-month notice in on your job, okay? Do you hustle your butt off for that two weeks? Or do you just kind of sit back and coast and sort of wait for the two weeks to go by? You're getting paid still, and then you, you go out the door. That is lame duck, okay? And what people don't realize is even though the election happens in November, the transfer of power doesn't come until January, two months later. So a lot of things could play out in terms of stimulus over that amount of time. And so I want to get into a couple scenarios and really give you guys an idea of what could potentially happen depending on who wins this election. All right. I'm going to start with Biden. OK, if Biden were to win, I have a few scenarios. Some are favorable and some are not so favorable. I'm going to get into the favorable ones first. OK, so let's say Biden wins and the Democrats take the Senate and the Democrats hold the House. That means all Democratic power in all, in all three, the admin, House, and Senate. That's all of Washington. It is very likely that you're going to see a larger stimulus check. $3.4 trillion Heroes Act or greater is, is very plausible, okay? Now, a couple things. Now, are we going to sit on a lame duck? Probably not, okay? Because once the, once the powers see that there's a shift in power... You know, the Senate could just give up and say, all right, we're going to work with Nancy because for the next several years, it's going to be it's going to be Democrat power that's that's in charge. Right. So they could work it with Nancy and the lame duck scenario may not happen. I'm going to talk about a situation where the lame duck, lame duck may happen if Biden wins. OK, if Biden wins and the Republicans keep the Senate just as they are today and the Democrats keep the House just like they are today. Well, we're going to see the same thing we've been seeing now, okay, where it's like we're sitting on this $2.4 trillion smaller deal because the Senate is not going to be willing to pass. Republicans are not going to be willing to pass that higher stimulus bill. And this has a bad outcome because you would have a lame duck possibly from President Donald Trump where he may just kind of sandbag the deal and just sit back and say, all right, I'll wait for the next two months to go by. And when Biden comes in, he could battle this out himself, right? That could be a scenario. Now let's talk about if Donald Trump wins, all right? Two scenarios here as well. You could have Donald Trump winning, the Democrats take the Senate, and the Democrats hold the House. So now you have Republican in, in, as the president and Democrats and Democrats in both Senate and the House. Well, the 2.2, 2.4 is possibly a scenario, and it would be during lame duck, right? Because there'd be a lot of back and forth between the president not wanting to sign and not, you know, striking on vetoing bills, etc. And there'd be a lot back and forth that, you know, that would have to be negotiated. Now, there is the possibility that President Trump may reward the people and say, you know, you guys voted me back in. As a result of voting me back in, I'm willing to just sign, you know, whatever, whatever the Democrats wish to sign. And then you could possibly see even a higher, higher bill. We're getting into 3.4 trillion. So there's two good possible outcomes there. One results in a lame duck and the other one results in possibly higher stimulus or even the 2.2, 2.4 trillion dollar bill. Now let's talk about if Donald Trump wins and the Republicans keep the Senate and the Democrats hold the House exactly the way it is now, okay? <laughs> Nothing changes. 
Uh, you guys are going to see the same thing that's happening today, most likely, right? For stimulus purposes, uh, it's going to be the least amount. You're going to have clarity issues. You're going to have all this back and forth. Mitch McConnell will still be in charge, and he's going to want to see packages pushed out until February. That's what Mitch McConnell's announcing right now. And so you could see you could see where we're getting into the lame duck scenario again, where it's maybe February before you see any stimulus deals. Now, Donald Trump may also reward the people again and say, well, we're, we, nothing's really changed, right? And he may put more pressure on his Republican Senate to get the deal done and work with Nancy. But, you know, if you really take a look back and you just pause for a second and just look at what's been going on, there's just been a lot of, a lot, it's, it almost seems like the whole stimulus plan from the very beginning was designed to be held for after the election. I think this was planned four months ago, okay? Nancy wasn't moving from her $3.4 trillion. She finally came down to $2.4 trillion. However, she never changed any of the language, never removed things from the bill, Mo moved it closer on timelines and et cetera, but never really took things out of the bill. And then you have Steve Mnuchin on his side, on, on the administration side, who declares that he's been sending over communications to Nancy Pelosi and her team. But really, it's it, he's just been saying in his letters that I've worked with sending, right? Or working to send, is what he says. We work to send, but it doesn't say we officially sent, right? Because if they did officially send it, we would have we would have seen it. Something would have came out that would have been leaked to the, to the public to review, and we would have seen it, and it hasn't happened. Okay. All right, let's, we're going to move on to the topics of lockdowns. There's a few topics here I want to really get into. Important stuff, so stick around here. Let's, let's get into these topics. And this is how you know your kids are in your office when you uh, see a, a basket of Halloween candy that's sitting there from uh, when they were sitting at your desk using your computer. <laughs> okay, guys, let's talk about lockdowns, right? Uh, <laughs> lockdowns. Right now, uh, New Jersey and New York are really the only two talking about any types of lockdown or, or extended restrictions. New Jersey is threatening a full lockdown, uh, you know, on restaurants, on uh, small businesses, pulling back manufacturing uh, laborers, and then leaving it open to this the uh, just the um, essential workers. Uh, and New York is requiring that all visitors right now, if you're crossing that border, you must provide proof within three days of crossing that border that you have not tested positive for the virus. Okay, John Hopkins came out to state. Big details on how they feel lockdown should be handled. This is some interesting stuff. You guys are going to want to pay attention to this, okay? Just, just Let me just read something here. They're declaring that the only reason lockdowns would be necessary was due to the decrease of the hospital capacity in the past, right? So that makes sense, right? We didn't have a good plan going into this, going into the original virus when it finally hit the U.S. And numbers were just spiking. People were going into the hospital, really flooding the hospital, with fears, you know, that they're going to die, all kinds of stuff. Like a lot of information was very loose when this very, when the virus first started. And so hospitals were flooded, right? And because they were inundated, it was like you had no other choice. You had to pick the lockdown mechanism because you had to stop people from going out, spreading. We didn't have any testing. We didn't have any tracing. We had nothing to really combat this virus. And now it seems, seems that uh, John Hopkins is saying that you know, the, the better approach might be to increase testing and increase tracing of, of, of the virus. And that, you know, a new targeted approach is, is what's needed. A lockdown is only affected in dire needs. Uh, when hospitals are full, lockdowns would only work if there were clear metrics for reopening like they're finding right now in Europe and China. Now, Europe and China did go into lockdowns. I announced uh, several, several uh, European countries that have gone into lockdown. And it did not do well for the economy. Uh, right now, Goldman Sachs has a prediction that the Eurozone's GDP is going to go from a 2.2% growth to a 2.3% decline. Now, multiply that by four quarters, and you're going to see in the headlines, negative 18% on the GDP. Scary stuff, right? <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's really, it's really a 2.3% decline per quarter, right? But, you know, they blow it up to negative 18%. On the virus, uh, updates on the virus, 93,581 deaths as of yesterday with, sorry, 93,581 new cases with 540 deaths. I'm sorry, I'm tongue-tied at the moment. And experts believe that by next week, we will see consistent 1,000 per day of deaths. Very sad, very sad, 
very sad stuff. I, I, we need to combat this virus. We need to do something. Something drastically different has to change. And guys, more information is coming on Main Street Lending Program. Now, again, I announced this breaking news on my channel. We have a $600 billion fund sitting with the Federal Reserve that had just been lowered. The original, the original loan program was designed for loans of $250,000, and they just dropped them to minimum loan amounts of $100,000. Okay, This is big news for many small business owners because before you weren't able to qualify. Okay, And, and, and the basic premise of this is they're taking priority loans of, of uh, businesses with 15,000 or fewer, all the way down to the number one, 15,000 or fewer employees within their small business. Now, within my network, within my business network, I actually have six members of my network right now going through this application process. It is not so far proving to be a quick application process like the PPP program. It's more like the IDLE program. It's a little bit longer, drawn out program. Um, but stay tuned to this channel. We're going to have detailed information on how you guys can qualify for this loan and, and everything, that's, everything that's inside of it from the application, the terms and conditions, if there's any collateral involved. We're going to get into very specific details and highlight for you guys how you guys could capitalize and get in, in line and get these funds. $600 billion so far, they've only issued $3.7 billion worth of loans have gone out. And if you guys truly need these loans, these now are loans, okay? So these are not grants. These aren't things that you get to keep. These are official loans coming from the Federal Reserve. Uh, so we'll have all the details on how you guys could capitalize and get into this program so that you could keep your business running into 2021 so we can get this pandemic behind us and move on to bigger and better things. That has been your stimulus update for November the 3rd. Yes, it's election day, guys. I hope everybody got out and cast their vote and uh, picked the uh, candidate of their choosing. Uh, I hope it, uh, we get this election over with and get back into some serious stimulus talks here in the future. Um, don't forget, guys, to uh, like, subscribe, share this with your friends, share this with your fellow Uber Lyft drivers, share this with your 1099 independent contractors, whoever your gig workers, whoever you guys are, small business owners, share this with all your friends. Get the message out there that we have a lot of details that we have to go over and you guys don't want to miss any deadlines, any updates right here on those channels where you're going to find out all that information and more, right? So, and guys, I have a giveaway. The moment I reach the next 1,000 subscribers, if you guys post comments down below, that is your ticket to enter into the into the sweepstakes where I'm giving away $100 to one lucky comment that I'm going to grab randomly uh, as soon as I reach my next thousand. So I thank you guys again so much for joining me. I love you all. You guys are a great audience, great community, and I will catch you all on the next one. Bye for now.